and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm your host for today's episode, Ruby Zoom. Today, we are going to try and retrofit a vintage pinball machine with modern electronics. The machine in question for this video is the 1958 Bally Bingo Machine Cypress Gardens. Now that name is a bit long, so I've renamed her Miss Creaky. Stay tuned to see if I have the wits and guts to update and understand this classic example of electronics engineering. I wanna give you just a little bit of history. Miss Creaky is in a class with some of the other first mass-produced electronic ball-based arcade games ever. Like other electromechanical or EM machines for short, Miss Creaky is distinguishable by her honestly really loud noise that she makes when you play her. And she has more switches, relays, and miles or kilometers of wire than I have ever seen in any other electronic project I've seen in my life so far. Miss Creaky's technology stayed in fashion from the 1930s until about the 1970s when solid state technology came into the arena and said bye bye. Since Miss Creaky technically has no solid state brain, shh, don't tell her, her gameplay is not super complicated. However, that does not stop her insides from being insanely complicated. Now this one's on me, but it was only after I picked up Miss Creaky that I started to read articles about restoring vintage bingo and pinball electromechanical machines. Now you would think, well, why would you read articles after picking her up? Well, she looked cool, so I figured I'd go meet her and then I'd learn more about her. Anyways. To my surprise and initial disappointment and terror, pretty much all of the vintage pinball and EM machine articles said something to the effect of, quote unquote, electromechanical pinball machines are not really a recommended first choice to the new pinball buyer. And these games are the most complex of any electromechanical game ever devised. I always do this to myself. With these confidence shaken quotes in mind, I started to come up with a plan. Step number one, understand the inner workings of Miss Creaky. Schematics, gameplay, internet forums, the typical works for understanding something that you really have no idea what's going on in there. Step number two, identify some components that can be replaced by modern electronics. For example, motors, fuses, changing light bulbs out for LEDs, and then replace those components. Step number three, transfer, aka program, the game logic to a solid state board. Onto something like an Arduino Mega perhaps, or a Raspberry Pi that controls an Arduino, I have yet to decide. Now steps four through six sound pretty complicated, but it's something you might all be familiar with. Step number four is troubleshooting. Step number five is troubleshooting. And step number six, you guessed it, is cry. No, I'm just kidding. It's troubleshooting. Now, after three iterations of troubleshooting and probably just a few tiers, step number seven should come, which is gameplay of Miss Creaky 2.0. So stay tuned to see if I can stick to my initial plan of understand, identify, replace, and replay, or if I tap out halfway through and fall in love with Miss Creaky as is. I started the project by splitting Miss Creaky into three sections, the upper cabinet, the lower cabinet, and the play field. And first things first, I started by taking her apart. As you can see here, we removed the play field and then started digging through all the weird and magical things it held. There was two main components of the play field I was interested in. First is the actual spaces where the balls go into the holes, and then the shutter motor, which is the mechanism that resets the play field by sliding that piece of MDF or whatever it is back and letting all the balls fall through. So after a little bit of cleaning, I took off the sliding piece of the playfield and I began to inspect all of the switches that detect whether or not a ball has fallen in a given hole. As you can see, it operates pretty straightforward and I popped out my multimeter to see if any switches were having a difficult time 
I then had to desolder my first connection on Miss Creaky, which was scary to say the least. I needed to go way hotter than I was anticipating to actually desolder this wire. So after desoldering that wire, uh, I was able to peel back kind of the shield that held the switch and clean it with some contact cleaner. And then it was time to reinstall the Playfield shutter which is driven by the shutter motor. And that brings us to the actual shutter motor itself. And let me tell you, this thing is crazy. I have heard about cams and switches throughout my entire mechanical engineering education, but I have never seen something quite like this. I started off by inspecting along with the manual to figure out what the heck was going on here. Figured out that the arm was driven by the motor which moved the play field, and then got to mess around with spinning the motor to see how the switches went from normally open to closed or vice versa. And found it easier to figure out what was happening with a paper towel behind the switch stack. And after going through and verifying the switches were either normally open or normally closed, I gave it a big old thumbs up and moved on. It was then time to move on to the top of the play field which I was mostly concerned with cleaning off the dust and debris that had accumulated over the years, and not much else. Look at that dirt. I then decided to clean up the ball launcher force indicator so that you can see the stripes indicating how much force you put into the ball. And then I decided to take off one of these pins to make sure that it was not connected to anything electrically. This switch is one of my favorite switches on the game. Then it was time to move on to the lower cabinet, which is where the ball return tray lives, as well as the lift mechanism, and a whole lot of dirt. So I started off by removing the ball tray and opening up the front door to get a look at the coin collector before moving on to the ball lift mechanism. I spent some time fiddling around with how the arm moves up and down before finding a single contact that had been bent back pretty severely. This is the only broken contact I've seen on this machine, so that was interesting. My best bet is that it relates to whether or not the front door is open or closed, so perhaps an anti-cheat mechanism. And then I thought it was time to reassemble Miss Creaky because all looked good, and then it was time to turn her on and see if I had broken anything. That sounds promising. The ball still loads, that's good. This is the face of me realizing I had in fact broken something on Miss Creaky, or at least found something that wasn't functioning as well as I thought the first time around. So I started off by trying to reset the play field and noticed that a lot of the balls weren't falling through as they were supposed to. Here's a cool view of the underside of the table with the shutter motor opening and closing the shutter. You can actually see things arcing. And after some research, I discovered that the most likely cause behind the shutter mechanism and the ball lift mechanism not working is a series of contacts that live under the trough. Well, in my pursuit to fix things, I broke things, which happens sometimes, but it does suck. Something is happening with the ball lifter mechanism. Let's see. Uh, I guess we turn it on again? Okay. It loaded. We reset it. Great. <laughs> what fixed it? I don't know. My guess is magic. My second guess is I was touching some of these switches, which are tell the machine how many balls are in the ball trough. And perhaps in my touching and prodding of them, I knocked some debris loose. I bent it a little bit better. Something magical happened, um, but it seems to work now. So let's try playing a game again. I recently got a tetanus shot. I think that was a good idea before working on this. <laughs> okay, I heard the sound of a ball loading. Let's reset the game. A ball came up, but the shutter, the shutter didn't close. So if I play this ball, it's gonna cause issues. Oh, the shutter closed. Okay. I got a 21. Oh, whoops. You almost did it, Creaky. The ball is struggling to come out of the hole, which makes me think that the spring uh, something happened with the spring when I was dropping balls onto it. Okay, 
The ball assist button, which is down here, helped. So the ball is struggling but failing to come out, which means that the lift mechanism isn't coming up high enough. So this guy is most likely the culprit. I literally just like pulled the spring further in so it's a little bit more in tension. Let's see if that works. I'm getting better at that. Creaky, get your balls up. Hey, she did it. Hey, Creaky. Creaky did it. Creaky is back. Also, it makes me nervous because all I really did was just and like whisper good thoughts into her ear and now the switches work which makes me think I definitely need to clean, clean all the switches but that's probably a later problem. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Road Test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment and even online training courses in exchange for a detailed review. Join our Road Test program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff? So a few things come to mind when I think of how we can update Miss Creaky. The first thing is motors. Uh, the motors in Miss Creaky are old. Yeah, thanks Captain Obvious. I was able to learn what type of motor was in Miss Creaky. It's apparently called a squirrel cage motor. I'd never heard of that before. But what I do know is that this motor uses the indents and then the bumps or the ridges and valleys on the different cams to open and close switches and tell the rest of Miss Creaky what position the motor's at. So if you need a motor that has some awareness of its own positioning, a good thing to use would be a stepper motor. But in order to run a stepper motor, you need some sort of driver. And I really like this board, which can control up to three steppers at a time. It's usually used as a CNC shield, but for the case of this lower cabinet where we have two motors that we need to control, this could be a good option. Now, in order to read out where those motors are and if signals are reading high or low, we need something like an Arduino. Um, this Arduino has been on the wall of shame because it's actually dead, hence the zip tie to remind me. Another good option would be to use LEDs in the place of some of the light bulbs on the top of the game board. This would allow us to get some different colors, have a little bit less of a concern about fires. I am really struggling with the thought of ripping any of this out. It's first off in really good shape, all things considered, and second off, it's historic. I don't feel like I have the right to gut it because she's lived a life three times as long as mine. I don't think I can tear Miss Creaky apart. These materials have stood the test of time, essentially, so who am I to replace something that's repairable and functional with materials that are not true to her historical nature? I think I should have thought about that a little bit more before going on a modernization video, but I also didn't know that I would like this this much. The details, love, and wear and tear that are shown on Miss Creaky are a visual representation of her history. And at the end of the day, she really is just too cool. From the labels that are affixed throughout her inside cabinet, to the main CPU that still scares me, to the amount of learning that I had to get through in order to make this video even semi-coherent, I couldn't bring myself to replace the giants of the work before me with these little guys. It just didn't seem right. Well, dear Element 14 friends, I can't do it. I can't rip out her guts. So, you know what they say, if you can't beat them, join them. Creaky, I'm in your era, kind of. I'm a woman engineer, so not really. I may have failed to modernize her, but I definitely didn't fail to love her. So, let's enjoy the finished for now product, the new, and slightly more clean and back to functional Miss Creaky. <laughs>
uh, reading this sheet of paper right there, I discovered that I was missing some things when I was trying to play Miss Creaky. So, discovered that the red button is what resets her counter to zero. So, she's no longer a little confused. Um, and then there's an option to play for extra balls after shooting five balls if I press the yellow button after depositing coins. But I'm pretty sure that the previous owner deactivated everything relating to coins so that you can just play for fun. Um, so if I want to make money off of my friends, I'm gonna have to set that up, but that could be a different video. We have the magic square buttons lit up, um, which means can push one of these buttons and move your square. So there's an A, B, a C, and a D, and then E down here. So if I press E, it moves the numbers. So score future before third ball. Don't totally know what that means yet, but okay, I got an eight. Eight lives on the E wheel. Um, so if I push E, now eight's over here. Now I have two in a row. That's promising. I got a 20. I got a 13. I could move the 13 onto this line, so let's do that. That's about the best I can do. I started this project with zero knowledge about vintage pinball slash bingo machinery and very minimal knowledge about 1950s, also vintage electromechanical engineering. She is a warm and wonderful reminder that engineering can and honestly should focus on reliability, repairability, and caretaking over consumerism and disposing of your new iPhone the second it's no longer the color that you like. She has inspired me to build projects in a more robust manner as I go forwards. And these past few months, combing through her intricate hardware and schematics just as tall as I am have left me wanting more. Well, that's all we have for this failed attempt at a modernization video today. Have you ever repaired vintage electronics? Let us know on the Element 14 community at element14.com presents, and we'll see you next time.